Hi everyone, it was a quick introduction, Robin, thank you. <laughs> Alright, to start with uh, this topic, how can we prevent radicalization in Commonwealth countries is very close to my heart. If I say I personally have been affected by this radicalization issues, and my journey started when I saw Lee Rigby's murder, cold blood murder in daylight. I went to my imams to ask for a solution. Why there is a silence in the Islamic world? Why are we silent? We have to react because no human being would do such a thing and then hijack the religion of Islam in this order. But what I, what I got back from them was a silence. And I literally, I spoke out against them and I tried to do something, voice out my concern. And what I received in return was threatening phone calls. I received threatening phone calls from without numbers, don't know who is doing it, but I received threatening phone calls. Uh, my family was threatened, I went to the police. The police were really helpful. They said, they said to me, please change your number. So it was really help for me. <laughs> so <laughs> at the end of the day, I changed my phone number. And after I changed my phone number, I still received these threats. And they used to do so many things. And then finally, I was assaulted for my beliefs in a Western way of acting on a peaceful way of believing in Islam, being an open spokesperson for peace. I was assaulted. And two of these perpetrators were uh, given community sentence, which was absolutely amazing. So at the end of the day, so these are the things which I have gone through on a personal level, and I take it on a personal level, in this thing of radicalization should be rooted out, because no human being would ever agree to such a thing which is affecting our society in, in this order. And with this as a start, I have got three things which is mainly focused on these Commonwealth countries, and Britain as being the head of Commonwealth, I believe there are three major issues which we are facing in this radicalization issue. And there is a word which I've designed, and this word, word I've said as MRP. M stands for media, R stands for religious leaders, and P stands for political leaders. So when I say media, often people think media can make somebody heroes, and they can make somebody zero if they have to. So we have to understand the importance of media, and in this current stance, when I see the social media each day bombarding messages of hatred each day, day in and day out, they're trying to promote somebody, and they're trying to hate, at the same time, they're trying to promote hatred to other person. Say for example, India as a country, we're talking about Commonwealth, let me go to India. So India as a country, if you can see, each day, if you say, if you say if you see the newspaper in India, there is one news which comes in. And definitely you can, you can see that there is something about their neighboring countries. And filled with hatred. Filled with hatred to the neighboring country. How do you think peace is going to be achieved? So if you're going to say to me that I'm going to fill in with hatred in the national media and support it with uh, backing from the government and spread it to all your citizens, how are we going to get peace? People are being nurtured with hatred each day. And we don't need this in our society. We don't want our children to have, to have hatred for our neighbors, for our neighboring countries. For us to have love, we should promote love. So this is the f f first thing. And I want to quote a very interesting thing from Mark Twain. Mark Twain, he said, if you don't read newspaper, if you don't read newspaper, you are uninformed. Yes, we are uninformed if you don't read the newspaper and we become ignorant because we don't know what's happening around us. We become ignorant. And the same Mark Twain said, if you do read the newspaper, you are misinformed. So, am I, am I, am I going to be misinformed or am I going to be uninformed? So, the media takes a very crucial role in promoting someone, in promoting their culture, in promoting a, a justice for their own love, love things, we need to be focusing on, especially when you look into this terrorism aspect, we can see, what we can see is these people are motivated 
by the daily feeds they are get, getting it through media. So media thing should be controlled in a way it does not affect our rights. It does not affect our daily day ongoing basis, whatever we are going through. It should not be prevented from giving us the main things, but it should be controlled in a proper way. This is the first thing which I want to say about the media. And the R stands for, as I told you, the religious leaders. And before I go to the religious leaders, how many of you have looked into a Bollywood movie in here? Anybody? Oh, yeah, majority of you have looked into a Bollywood movie. In the Bollywood movie, have you not seen something of hatred against Pakistan? Yes? 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 That is not? Okay, why is this hatred coming? Why is this hatred being developed? As countries, we should not be developing this hatred. Why is this coming? And this is the primary base, this is the primary base for something. I'm Indian, by the way. Okay? Uh, All right, I'm just to stop. Can I just say, but I don't think Bhai Jan did promote hatred. Fantastic, but that's only one in hundred. Yes. We do it question next, question later. Later, please. Keep okay, and I support my country to the core. I support Britain, which is my country, and as an Indian from my parents, I do support India. Alright? So what I'm saying is in a hundred movies which are being produced, ninety-nine movies promote hatred. They promote something of a neighboring country as evil. Neighboring countries promoting child soldiers, neighboring countries promoting uh, some kind of terrorism activities anytime we are being they are constantly keeping us in the budge of fear fear to control us fear to uh, do something that we, we are they have to protect us just like our parents we don't need that we need love and we need this common good of education to our children and how can we do this so these Bollywood movies contribute to it the daily social media which contributes to it and if you look into all these medias and this hatred is being built up in these children or these youngsters on this men and they, they just put something in Twitter and these are planting bombs. I call them planting bombs. This Twitter, whatever they do, they plant something on the Twitter and this is just waiting for it to be exploded. This is a landmine. If you really look into it, whatever <coughs> message is, I'm, I'm not saying about Trump by the way, but it's just the way it is. If you look into it, the, there is a message. Something, 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 something. They just say something. And this message is waiting to be exploded. Some part of the Commonwealth countries. Somebody don't like it, and somebody does, does not agree to it, and there is a fight, and immediately there is a clash, and there is riots, and immediately after the riots, there is something of uh, segregation of these two communities, and then it becomes as a radical. These, these ch children are being nurtured to be radicals. And then, secondly, I come to the, on the MRP, I come to the point of R. R stands for religious leaders. We have to agree to one point. Religion has always played a crucial role in shaping our countries. Don't we agree? Britain was formed by religion. If you say look into India and Pakistan, because of the religion differences, they are two different countries. If you look into Pakistan and Kolkata, there is two differences of Kolkata. There is two differences of two uh, different countries because of religion. If you look into for any Arabic country, Shia Sunni, the conflict is there. That is because of religion. So if you look into all these countries, the religion forms the basis of all countries. Religion forms the basis of all these countries. There are certain countries which are uh, due to unavoidable circumstances, don't believe in religion. Yes, of course, but these countries do exist with religion. So these religious leaders play a very crucial role. They play a very crucial role. And I can quote you certain religious leaders from India who are currently occupying Indian parliament and who I have met very recently, who have spread hatred. And they are occupying top positions in India. And they are occupying top positions in Sri Lanka. They are occupying top positions in Myanmar. Or do we really have to have religious leaders? Because a country's constitution should be secular. We don't want something of a religious leader who puts his indoctrinated doctrine into our, religion, uh, into our law system and trying to occupy our governance. We don't want that. And in that order, I can say, I went to Delhi very recently. I went to Delhi just last week. And I spoke to one of... Uh, top imams in India 
who has got five, nearly half a million Imams under him. And his name is Dr. Iyasi, thanks to Robin, who introduced me to him. His name is Dr. Iyasi. He controls nearly half a million Imams under his control. So if you look into it, one Imam, if he has 100 Muslims under his order, so for half a million, you can call it 50 million Muslims he is in control of, who he can spread the hatred to. But, but he's a very nice gentleman. He, he was listening to me very patiently of my ideas and my strategies. So when I asked him, I, I asked him a question. When I meet all my friends, European friends, in U UK, in other countries, wherever I meet, the first question they ask me is, have your religious leaders or imams, haven't they got any other things to do? Except for issuing fatwas. Okay? This was a question normally they do ask me. All right, I'm being very honest. I'm, I'm a Muslim. I'm very proud of it. I'm not even. No, 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 it's okay. It's a future. All right. So, ha haven't they got anything else? So when I speak to them, I'm I'm embarrassed because when I see Salman Rushdie, they they say, oh, we need to pluck off his eyeballs up. We want to take off his uh, head. If somebody uses somebody's head, we are going to uh, give him that much money. We don't want fatwas. Fatwas in Arabic. In English means opinion. We don't want religious leaders' opinion for hatred. We want love. We want education. So I requested him personally to give a strategy. I, I personally I requested him in terms of strategy, in devising a strategy. I asked him, can you kindly give a fatwa to all children, especially women, young girls, and children from all other cars, all other religions, that we are going to issue a fatwa that we need youngsters to get educated until their graduation and should be compulsory in a progressive way of peace in order to learn education. And there was a, a confrontation, yes, there was. And he, after me speaking to him for one and a half hour, he agreed to give a fatwa like that. You can ask me what kind of implication this is going to give. Well, nearly 50 million of his followers are going to accept his fatwa and they're going to have his children educated in a righteous order. When there is education, when there is education, a proper education, they're going to start with a way wherein we want in our Western society. <coughs> so this is the first thing, a first step which I have taken in order to issue. So we want a positive role from our religious leaders in terms of establishing peace and love. So I as a person, uh, believe that uh, there is a constant fight between the political and the religious leader. If you look into it, Rajapakshe, the Sri Lankan, the ex Sri Lankan president, he goes to the religious leader and he bows and he prays in front of him. So normally, when the religious leader looks into him and he thinks he's more superior, he's not he's not answerable to anyone. If you look into it, that comes from the respect which he holds for this guy. But at the end of the day. We need to understand there is a constant battle in, in the, especially the Commonwealth countries. I'm not talking about uh, head of Britain, but I'm talking about other Commonwealth countries like India or any other country. There is a constant hierarchy fight between these religious leaders as well as the political leaders. So, so in in this regards, I want to say about religion. <coughs> there is only one caste, the caste of humanity. There is only one religion, the religion of love. And there is only one language, the language of heart. So if everybody can speak from their heart, that would be nice and good for world peace. And finally, when it comes to political leaders, which is MRP, which stands for P, or political leaders, I want to sh uh, quickly say about a movie which I watched. The movie's name is Amedi Parai. It's a Tamil movie. Probably you would not have watched it, but I will just say, there is a political guy who has not done anything. His people hate him. And he's having a conversation with his uh, member, his manager. And he requests his manager, okay, how is this election campaign going on? Well, this manager replies to him, well, the people hate you. The people hate you. There's no way you can win. When the political guy goes to him and says, well, I have not done anything. And then this manager replies to him, well, that is exactly the same reason why they hate you. Because you haven't done anything. Okay? So, what happens then? They devise a plan. So there is a fight between these people at this point, uh, at the end of the movie. And after the fight, this political leader asks his manager, what were we talking about? What were we talking about? What were we discussing? 
And this manager goes to him, now we had a fight, argument, so I forgot what we were discussing about. Then the political leader goes to him and he says, oh, if we have a fight between ourselves, we tend to forget what we were discussing. So that way, if I create a problem or fight between the communities, the people will forget I have not done anything for them. So what he does is, he creates a constant fight between these communities, for Hindu community and Muslim <coughs> community. He creates a fight. That way, people forget this politician is not a righteous guy. He hasn't done anything for the community. But what comes first is the hatred. The first thing which comes to their mind is the hatred for their fellow brothers. So, this is how these politicians try to do that. And especially in India, this is the biggest problem in India, in any other countries of Commonwealth. Because they try to develop hatred so they can hide, they have not, the politicians have not done anything for their society. So with this, with this in mind, I want to finish my speech with what Islam says, the final bit. Islam says, obey those who are authority over you. Surah Al-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 59. So, if everybody of the Muslims, I'm talking about Muslims because I'm a Muslim, and I can talk about humans as well because this is completely uh, irrelevant of the religion, but anyway, Islam says, obey those who are authority over you. So if everyone believes that my authority is my people who are superior to me, in my country, this country, the authority of me is Theresa May. Although we have political difference, we agree to disagree, but we have to agree to the point, she is our, my authority, my counselor is my authority, the person, a uh, member of parliament, is my authority. We have to go by institutions. This is what is lacking at this point of time. We have to believe in our system. We have to, this is our system, and we have to believe it. And last point, which I want to say is what APG Abdul Kalam, the ex-president of uh, India, he said. So what he said about uh, keeping an order in the nation is righteousness of heart. When there is righteousness of heart, there is beauty in the character. When there is beauty in the character, there is harmony in the home. When there is harmony in the home, there is order in the nation. When there is order in the nation, there is peace in the world. Thank you very much. For coming.